everybody, it's Stephen and Walter in Oz with our nightly, daily, whatever time you watch it, report on what we did today. So, lighting in here is a little strange, getting a little quivering. Well, not much we can do about it. Yeah, actually, you may not be able to see that as we can. But um, we're in our hotel room here in um, this is Stanthorpe. Stanthorpe, yeah. It's really. <laughs> Well, we didn't do any wineries. There's a bunch of wineries yeah. around here, but uh, um, we just sort of walked the town and had some a late lunch. And yeah. Well, before that, we did. I took some shots on the road. The scenery was very uh, interesting because we kind of went into um, what did the guy here call it? The divide. Yeah, the divide. I guess there's a mountain range that we had to drive through. It wasn't like a super high mountain range, but it was a significant. Yeah. And they were doing construction on parts of the road as well, so there were some delays. Actually, the guy here at the hotel, when we checked in, asked if we had much of a delay. We didn't have that much uh, with it. Um, different kind of road, though, to drive on because we've been so far coming up to Brisbane from Sydney. We're, was on, we were on the, what they call the M1. Which was a, more of a coastal road. Yeah, and it's also a bigger road Yeah, uh, to start with. But now we're on something called the A15, and it's in parts yeah. of it, most of the way, it's just two lanes of traffic, like going this way, that way, you know, kind you of You know, thing. like it's, um, we, uh, on the way up on the M1, it was four lanes of traffic, two going one way and two going the other way. Now we're on one road where it's a single lane going each way, so. Yeah. So anyways, we were about how many kilometers from Brisbane? Brisbane? About 230. Yeah, 230. It's not that far, really. Uh, it, was... it took a little while to get here because we had the delays on to get across the mountains. Yeah. And um, you can't really drive that fast on the road. No. So. And we found out, too, that um, they take it very seriously here. The law does if you go over the speed limit. They have controls like speed cameras a lot remote ones and um, if you get caught even going to Philippa said if you get caught going even 15 kilometers over the speed limit it's something like a $450 fine and you get three demerit points as well they're serious about it and you can tell that having all those speed um, cameras. cameras and that in the road does make a difference here because most of the drivers on the road, they were not, they were doing under the speed under, limit. Yeah, and, and, as, and as soon as you get into a change speed limit, like you go from a highway speed to a uh, city speed, everybody just goes right down. They drop to, right yeah. down. Um, so, I and I don't think that's a bad thing. They should implicate, implement more of that in our country. Yeah, too. I know. You know, one thing I think goes good with the speed cameras is that um, it keeps... Uh, uh cops and that like there were a lot of cops in our country that are busy just doing speed traps right and uh, to me that sounds like it's a waste of time to do right when they've got other things that are more serious to have to look after yeah you know but i also i have a conspiracy theory on this one um at least in Ontario, Canada. Toronto especially, the cops are always, the biggest part of the Toronto city budget is the, is the police force. And there never seems to be enough money for that. They Every year they come back and want more and more money. And I mean millions more dollars. And they're saying that, you know, they don't have enough cops and they can't do their job and they got to hire more cops and all this other stuff and whatnot. Well, you know, if they took that money, invested it into the speed cameras... And then the cops could be out doing the more serious jobs, like keeping our cars from being stolen or cutting down on the number of violent crimes that are out there, you know, instead of just sitting there and trying to peg somebody because they're 15, 20 kilometers away. Well, the speed meanwhile, limit. the speed cameras also would catch the criminals that are taking off with your cars. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think Australia does a lot of things right here. I mean, I don't know, maybe Australians themselves don't think so, but looking at it from an outsider's point of view, it seems to me they have a better grasp on security anyways. 
uh, in this country. But anyways, we, we went to the Big Apple. Wow, what a disappointment. <laughs> it it al almost made the Big Banana look more exciting. Um, and if you've seen the previ uh, video that we did a while ago when we went past the Big Banana, we didn't go in because, well, we're not 10 years old. Although there are those that would claim we act like that. Um, because it was mostly a kind of a amusement park for kids. But this Big Apple, actually, I wasn't holding out for anything special. I'm glad I didn't. The Big Apple isn't so big <laughs> itself. I mean, we have a Big Apple east of us at home. And it has, it is a Big Apple. It, a really Big Apple. However, this place's claim to fame was, well, Walter looked it up and what they used to. We think no, they, I think it was changed. The name was changed because... It now is Vincenzo's, which is a, a Italian name. And I'm not 100% sure. I have to look up the video again. But I think it's the previous owners was named something else. And they had a lot. And the previous owners, a lot of their products were apple-based, whereas this Vincenzo's really wasn't It wasn't. There was hot sauces. There was salad dressings. <laughs> there was some cheese. And... They did have some apples. They had a wheelbarrow mm -hmm. with some little plastic bags with some little apples in them. Like the kind of thing you buy in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Actually, even sadder. I don't know how much they cost. That's all I saw of apples. I didn't see anything up on the walls saying, okay, if you want a bushel basket of apples or something like that. Not that we were going to buy a bushel basket of apples. But just nothing. So... Now, they had, you could have lunch there. We didn't have lunch, and I'm glad we didn't. But we I thought, okay, we've driven this way. We're at the Big Apple. I'm going to have some apple pie. Well, yeah, because the big thing was supposed to have this apple pie, right? Yeah. And it was Grandma's famous apple, apple pie, pie or whatever. I don't know mm. where Grandma learned how to make an apple pie. Well, I don't think Australians are famous for apple mm. pie, so. Well, it didn't look bad, although the pastry on it, when we saw it in the showcase... Looked uh, kind of cardboardy. Yeah, it looked kind of cardboardy and dusted with, you know, icing sugar kind of thing. But nevertheless, we got two pieces of that and with ice cream with it. And that, for the two pieces of pie and with the ice cream, was a little over $21 for it, okay? Now, yeah, if you go and you buy pie someplace, you are going to pay... A slice of pie, yeah. For a slice of pie. You're going to pay a lot. For it. I mean, it's basically is a ripoff, but I love pie. So we got that and we got a couple of cappuccinos as well. Well, the cappuccinos were good and that's in the video and you'll see what we're talking about here. The apple pie, it had no flavor. Yeah, zero flavor. Actually, I thought the crust would be cardboardy, but it wasn't. It was, um, it was soft, but it was almost like it was a shortbread, but it was... Um, uh, a soft shortbread, but it had no sugar in it. Yeah, it was it like was an apple really tart. really bland. Yeah, it was like an apple tart. You know what I mean? The the big ones? Because yeah. if you looked at the side of the pastry, it it, it had the ridges, you know, from a tart pan. Yeah. Kind and, of the, and the filling itself, the apples itself, had were very flavorful either. There was didn't no spice any in them. spices. There wasn't any them. cinnamon. There wasn't any. Sh it didn't, it taste didn't like even it taste sugar. like there was much sugar, if no. any, in it. And you could taste the apples, but they were a pale, uh, not a pale, but a a, a light apple taste. Very light. And they were a little bit sour. Yeah, that little tiny bit of tartness to them. Now, I don't yeah. mind a little tartness. No, to I it. don't mind either, but, actually. But it, but, but even it that, really wasn't. It was bland. Apple. I hate to say it, but it was bland. It was yeah. very bland. It was okay. It didn't really taste much of anything. No. And the ice cream, they gave you a little tiny scoop of and ice cream. And it was vanilla ice cream, and it was... It was nothing special. It was grocery store ice cream with it all. So that was a bit of a disappointment, <laughs> but not unexpected. Because, you know, I find when you put the word big in front of anything... You're going to be disappointed. Yeah, like in uh, <laughs> on the uh, other side of things, we have this big apple in our area, and they're supposed to make apple pies as well mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Well, their apple pies are no are not great either, and they're industrially made. 
They make hundreds of these pies because they're, they're shipped out to other places, the one in our area. And they have seeds in them and cores in them. Yeah. And they're, it's horrible. They're horrible. So if and we, they charge an arm and a leg for yeah. those pies. So if you compare the apple pie we had here and the apple pie back then, well, this apple pie here was much better. At least it didn't have any cores yeah, and seeds, or seeds in, in them. It. So that was a bit of a disappointment. I mean, the guy came over to the table picking up the plates when we were finished. He says, and how was it? I just, oh, it was fine. <laughs> because, you know, we'll never be here again. So why bother telling them that, you know, we're foreigners? What would we know about Australian pie? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's the way Australian pie is. Maybe it is. Pie, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, um, which reminds me of something else that's starting to become a... Uh, a bit of a repeat or a company or something. I'll, I'll mention it in a minute uh, when we get to that part of what we did today. So anyways, we got here to Stanthorpe, Stanthorpe, and uh, we couldn't check in. We were here early, like it was not even quite noon. And so we decided to check out the pretty little town. Someone said it's a pretty little town. It's okay. Yeah, that's right. It's a... Uh, well... To be honest, I didn't really have that much expectation no. coming through this way because I thought um, this is probably more Hicksville. It is. Okay, I'm sorry if that offends some natives to Australia that love this area. You know, you know more about the area than we do, but we're giving you our impressions as people who have never been here before. Okay? It's a hick town. They rolled up the streets literally at three in the afternoon. Yeah, a lot of places that, or they're like these cafes and stuff like that. And then a lot of places closed at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, and that was it. That's it. And there were other places, well, now mind you, we're here on a Monday. There were a lot of places that were closed on Monday. Yeah. And there are a lot of places that don't open, like for dinner uh, during the week until Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, kind of a thing or whatever. So we we walked the town. That didn't take long. Um, we parked before. We hadn't checked in here yet into the hotel. Um, it's not a hotel. It's a motel. And yeah, it's um, we walked the town. Didn't take long. Uh, I can't say as though they have excellent shopping. Uh, they. At the reject store. Yeah, the store. reject store. That was the highlight of it. And that's what it was called, the reject store. Um, and we actually bought some potato chips from the reject store and a chocolate bar. Um, so we decided, okay, we looked at what restaurants were open and for how long. And it looked like about the only place that we thought that might be a little nicer to eat at or just something a little different. There there was a, a kind of a diner, a 50-style-like diner called Groovin well, I think there were right. other nicer places if you went to the wineries around here. Yeah, well, see, that's the kicker, I think. I think that the people who come here are coming to do the wineries that are all in the region. And a lot of those wineries probably have restaurants in them, and they're probably a little bit more fine dining. But here's the problem. Walter's driving, so he can't be drinking, Right. So if we were to have gone to a couple of wineries and did some tastings and things like that, well, that's not good because... Yeah. Well, actually, if I was at home, I might take a slight sip or something like mm -hmm. that or something. But I don't want to drive, have any liquor in me when I'm driving a rental car. So. And not only that, but the tolerance level... Is lower and lower. Is, here is even... Is, even more strict mm -hmm. than it is in our own country. Not that we are saying you should drink and drive or, no. you know, or do that kind of, well, oh, I know how much I can drink before I blow over. No, I'd rather, whatever. I'd no. rather not at all. No. Uh, even at home, I don't like no. uh, drinking and, and having, having anything to drink when I'm driving. Yeah. So, uh, so that's we we just decided not to bother. bother with it. Plus on top of it all, we're not here to buy bottles of wine. Because we're not going to be taking them home, for one no, thing. No, we can take them. We're still got a few more days. Well, there. we can drink them here. Like, we're drinking this right now, which is actually a bubbly that is uh, Philippa's favorite. She gave us a bottle of it. And um, I, what is it called? It's uh, Grant 
Burge. Yeah. Grant Burge. And um, it's a Pinot Noir Chardonnay. And it's sparkling wine. Um, and actually, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. So we're drinking this. This was um, provided by Philippa, and we thank her for that. Um, and we are enjoying it, Philippa. So anyways, we decided, okay, after we had done the town, oh, we did the thermometer, the big thermometer. <laughs> it's a thermometer hole. There is there is uh, <laughs> supposedly some winery that somebody built a castle. We didn't go there, but... No. Well, back to the thermometer. It's a... It's at the park. The park is a nice little park, and you'll and see. And we went into the information it. center there. Oh, we went in the information center. Had a conversation with a lady in there about. Mostly, she talked to us about when she went to Edinburgh, uh, in Scotland at one time, and and whatnot. So actually, there is a sort of a park that you can wander around in here too, if you wanted to. That has a. Uh, um, the rocks and stuff like that, but we're not really hikers, no, not. so. No, we don't hike. Um, we said that for anyways. The big thermometer is in the little park down here in the town. What it is, it's a stone sculpture basically, and it has a hole in the center that looks like the shape of an old style thermometer. And at the top, there's a digital readout on what the temperature is, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, big thermometer. Uh, so we uh, after we finished downtown, that we decided, okay, well, let's go up to the hotel because God. We're trying to kill time. Uh, and check-in wasn't until 2. And it was at that point, it was about 1.30 or 1, 1.40, <laughs> something like that. And we came up here and we went to the reception area and there was nobody there. And it did say that they didn't check in until 2. So we thought, okay, so what are we going to do now? Like kind of a thing. Go back downtown. Wow. Um, but the guy... The reception, the people who run it, he actually came to the reception thing. He said, no, no problem. You check us in. And that was a fast check-in. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't ask you to show ID. No, he didn't, no. Or anything. Like, the other hotels asked for ID yeah. and all this kind of stuff and took forever. He said, okay. He said, says, what's your name? Walter said, because, of course, we pre-booked and everything, and he had the credit card there on file for it and that. He says, okay, you're in room 10, and he says, you can park right in front of it and, and everything. So we did. And I have pictures uh, on the video that you'll see of what this place looks like inside the room we have. They're not big. The room is quite tiny. Um, actually, but it's comfortable, I guess you'd say. It's got everything that we need. Like, there's a fridge here. There's a toaster here. There's a microwave here. And the bathroom's very, very modern in it. And the whole place is very, like, Has modern. been renovated. No USB outlets, though. Oh, wow. There's a thing. What is it? This, they have a, a decent amount of outlets, so. Yeah, that's one thing that at least the wall outlets you can get at. And they, like, there's a, a decent number of them. So with uh, the equipment we have, we can make it all work. Um and you don't have to, like, rearrange the furniture to try to get at them either. So that's a good thing. Um, so we decided, okay, now that we've got ourselves moved into the room and that, we'll walk back downtown. That, walking from this hotel downtown, it's about a kilometer. That's it. So we went back town because we thought, well, we'll go and we'll do a late lunch. And that'll be dinner as well, kind of a thing, at Lily's. Lily's Cafe. Got thinking on the way there, oh, don't think we can have a drink. That, that was one of the reasons we decided to walk, because we thought, well, we'll have a beer or two uh, on that. And uh, instead of taking the car back down, well, then it got dawning on me. It's a cafe. I bet you they're not licensed. And they're not. But that's okay. We had sparkling water uh, instead. Pineapple flavored. I hadn't had pineapple before. Yeah, they grow pineapples in Australia. Yeah, yeah, they do. And uh, it was kind of okay. Um, what we had for the lunch was all right. What did you have? You had a steak sandwich. I had a steak sandwich, and, and it was good. And what was on the steak sandwich? It had uh, cheese and uh, onions and tomato and... It beet, had, didn't it? A beet. It had a beet, yeah. Beetroot. They like, they like beets here. Uh, they put them on... 
uh, on a lot of things or in a lot of things uh, as well. Um, and I don't know how they are. A lot, what I've had have been pickled. And I don't yeah. mind a pickled beet. I'm okay with pickled beets. Um, I don't know if they do them other ways as well. Maybe they do. Um, and then, uh, and I had a clubhouse uh, like that. And I asked the girl, I said, because I'm picky about my clubhouses, okay? I don't want deli chicken. I want sliced off, you know, uh, sliced chicken or sliced turkey uh, with that. And I asked her, is it deli chicken or that? She says, oh, no, no. She says, it's a breast. We, we cook it and slice it. I said, oh, okay, sounds good to me. So I had that and it came with fries. What is it with them pre-salting French fries? We haven't had, I haven't had a lot of French fries well, since we've Yeah, but here, every but time, all the times I've had French fries so far in Australia, they put a ton of salt they, on them. They're, yeah, geez. If, they're, if the Americans come here, they'll love it. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, because they put a lot of salt in things too. Um, so just a tip, if you're trying to watch your sodium intake and you order French fries, test them before you put any more salt on them because you probably won't need any more salt on them. Um, Actually, I ended up putting salt on my steak sandwich because it was pretty bland. Mm. Well, what I had the the, um, uh, the clubhouse was good uh, with that. So they also had a few little pastries there, and I saw they had scones and, or scones, whichever way you want to say it. And um, I thought I like scones, and I thought, well, why don't we get a couple of scones takeaway? And we'll have them for brekkie tomorrow. And that. So we got them. I have a feeling they're going to be really hard and dry. And I looked at them. And to me, they look more... More like a tea biscuit. Where did I put them? They're in the bag. They're in the bag. Okay. I see the scone. Okay. Came in this lovely little bag. Okay. Which is... Thank you. And... Yeah, it looks like a tea biscuit. It's not a scone. No. Scone. That is a tea biscuit. Oh, this little sucker's going to be dry. Um, we have a microwave. So she asked us if we wanted any uh, cream and or jam for it. And we said no. And now we probably should have said so. I imagine it would be aquatic cream. Well, who I, knows? Who knows? I don't know. So anyways, looking forward to that tomorrow morning. Maybe not. The um, two of them cost us six bucks, so. Well, actually, I was surprised that, they, that we got two for the six bucks. I thought they'd probably be more. When she was talking about when she started ringing them up, I thought they're probably six bucks a piece. Mm. Uh, but they they weren't so good, so we'll see. Maybe they're not as dry as I think they're going to be. But those are not. They scones. don't look like scones. Those aren't no, scones. They're tea biscuits. Those are tea biscuits. Russ would like them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, anyways, their version of it. So we trundled our way back after we'd eaten back here to the hotel room. It was like. 315 or something i've spent most of the rest of the afternoon we have a little table and chairs outside on sort of a, a a long deck that runs in front of all the rooms kind of a deal and so we were sitting out there and drinking philippa's uh champagne or sparkling wine and i was watching shorts on tiktok walter was trying to contact president's choice MasterCard because he got an actual answer via email from them because you know squeaky wheel gets gets the oil especially if you go on something like Twitter or one of those because that's what he had done and said like how pissed off we were with their service and the whole bit and what you got a message yeah I know they just reiterated that what's on their website yeah. to Dial the 1877 number, which we can't because that only works if you live in North America. Yeah. Whether you're in the U.S. or in Canada. And the other one is to do a collect call to their 647 number, which, and they said just dial 0647. Well, you can't do that from Australia. So. No. 
You can if you're in North America, but you can't when you're in yeah. Australia. So I tried several different methods again. And again, I didn't get through to it. And so uh, I don't know what they expect. They said, well, you're make some, you've made some unusual um, purchases or something. So like we that. have frozen your card. Yeah. Basically. Well, yeah, we made some unusual purchases because we're in Australia. And we put that in their travel thing. Yeah, we, we put in, they have a thing that you put in that uh, to let them know that you're traveling, right? So we put that in. and uh, But then if you try and get back in it now, it says, oops, yeah. you can't access that. Oops, something went wrong on our end. Try again. Yeah. Well, anyway, oops, so we've got again. other cards that we're using, which is yeah. fine. But it's just getting very, very annoying. So Walter sent them off another email saying, well... I said, well, my, said. maybe one of your employees should try and contact the number because it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting. And you put in that we would be reporting this on our YouTube channel yeah, we did, as yeah. well. And that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, they don't seem to like that when you say these kind of things, which is exactly what we're going Poor for. We're advertising, yeah. yeah. So... Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see if we well, Walter gets any kind of answer back from them on this one. I mean, idiots. But you've heard the story because we've been talking about it back and forth. So anyways, it's not causing us that much grief, but it's an annoyance. Um, but nevertheless, they're a company. We deal with them. They're not treating us the way they should be treating their customers. So... Yeah. So let's see. So that's what we did this afternoon. We just came in because guess what? They have mosquitoes in, in this area and they found Walter. The mosquitoes always find Walter. So. And I have some repellent that I bought here, but it's like Vaseline. And it, do, it does seem to work a bit, but I'm, it's still, I still have enough bites that I don't really want. I don't, I'll, it'll make me feel uncomfortable. So. Yeah, he'll swell up. He has an allergic reaction to mosquito bites uh, with it. So, yeah. And none of the little creatures bit me. But when you're around Walter, you no know one else gets bit. They all go to Walter and go, oh, yum. Let's eat him. There's lots of him. We'll just dig right in. Yeah. Maybe your blood's very sweet and yeah. like that. It's the only part of you that is. Um, so, what are our plans for tomorrow? Well, we're driving to some other place is much but it's much bigger yeah tamworth tamworth have it's a... it's nashville of of australia oh they have the big guitar don't they yeah they have the big and guitar. we're not joking they have the big guitar big banana big apple big thermometer big guitar is there a theme happening here there is <laughs> apparently a town that has a big pineapple are we going there no Oh, we're going to miss the big we're at, We're actually south of it now. Mm. So anyways, well, I guess we're getting to see the more, maybe these... Rustic are, areas. Yeah, maybe these are how the real people live. Mm. You know, actually, they're nice. Cities. I mean, the people they're that nice we met today yeah. are very nice. Yeah. And... Now, we just had a truckload of construction guys drive in here back half an hour ago and all have rooms and that, so... The, they all came in one big truck and it said something paving company or something like that. So I guess they must be working and they put them up in a hotel, I guess, um, because they can't get home, maybe, because they come from mm -hmm. too far away or whatever. So, ooh, party tonight. Wow. Wild asphalt Aussies paving men beer. I don't know. <laughs> probably not they're probably too damn tired i don't know they just got back into their truck after they checked in the rooms and that and took off maybe they've gone someplace for dinner now there are a few watering holes here okay that claim they have food but mm, i think it's more parmies parmies yeah parmies or schnitzies 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 which is schnitzel or something like that i don't know i looked inside a, a couple of them went mm, no, <laughs> I don't think I want to eat there. You know, it's really food isn't their main event. It's more the beer uh, with it. So, so yeah, I think that's about it for today. Can't think of anything else exciting to tell you because nothing else exciting happened.
The Big Apple was the highlight of the day. That's sad. Okay. I might make some stops along the way tomorrow yeah. or whatever, but... Yeah. So, anyways, um, you can see what we saw today, because I'm going to put the video in here. This is going to be a short one today. See you tomorrow. Okay, so we're on our way to the Big Apple in Stanthorpe, which is also where we're spending the night. We'll be going from a city of over 2 million to a little town of 6,700. Sticks. I think we're going into the sticks. Stay in the right three lanes. But in the meantime, we had to get out of Brisbane. Now, it looked fairly direct to okay. get... Where, where am I going? Turning it off? No. no, you're going straight. Jeez. This is the problem. I'm navigating, but when the driver doesn't believe anything you say, I've got two maps open on here. It's on a display in the car seat. It talks to you which is annoying. Um, and so when we, we should have gotten out of the city very easily, according to the maps, and we would have if we had missed two turns. And I said to him, do it's you- It's the morning, I don't listen. No, you don't listen at the best of times either. That's my job. I'm navigator, he's driver. When I, I'm reading the signs ahead of things and everything I have to make sure so we won't have a, like a, screaming match like and pull a Yui in the middle of the highway that kind of thing although Philippa liked to do Yui's it's kind of her version of oh well it'll quilt out it'll Yui out <laughs> anyways but she knows where she's going because she lives Not here Stephanie will get along with yeah <laughs> Stephanie the speed demon and Philippa the U-turner <laughs> but anyways I just but it's not fun when you're in a strange place and you're driving on the on a side of the road you're not familiar with and trying to negotiate where you're going. And in our car, that the air conditioner isn't working very well. Yeah, great car. Pretty much non-existent air conditioning. Well, Walter says where we're going, it's got a few, a little bit cooler temperatures. Right now it's 23. I like it when you open up a car door and you just sort of pull, pour yourself out of the seat. God, these seats are, they are vinyl, I think. I don't know what they are. Start sticking to those and get off the seat. And, well, there goes the backs of your, the skin and on the back of your legs, yeah. Anyways, we're okay right now. We're out of Brisbane. We're heading towards the sticks. I'm really excited about the Big Apple. I hope it's more impressive than the Big Banana. So now we are definitely more away from the coast and into the interior. And you can see what the road's like and what the scenery is like here. Vegetation seems to be a little bit less dense than when we were in Brisbane. And of course the road that we are on now is not a motorway, a main highway. It is a main highway, but it's a, a smaller one. Kind of like, almost like uh, we're driving in our own province. Uh, out in on a lesser, but not a main highway. Yeah, not a main highway, not one of the 400 series in Ontario. It's kind of a nice change away from the traffic and stuff. And here, looking at the side window, you can get an idea of what we're looking at. And of course, when I put the camera up, I get trees. Let's see the distance. Ahead of us now. Yeah. Ahead of us now. Mountains. In the distance. What's that? The mountains in the distance. Mountains in the distance, Walter says. Yes. So a little, ooh, wow, bouncy, bouncy. Uh, a little different kind of scenery. view of the mountains in this area.
plants. Plants. Something green. Yeah. Well, we know it's not marijuana, so. Yeah. <laughs> See, they have all these crossing signs for animals, koalas, kangaroos, and I just missed it. I don't know if you caught it uh, in the video going, but I like to call them monkey crossing. If we come across another one, I'll try to get it on uh, video to show you what I mean. It's koala crossing. another this is refuge island sounds like a television show doesn't it but what they mean by that is if you're trying to cross this road you come down here and this is the refuge right here so you can stand in the middle get halfway and wait for traffic to lighten up so you can get across the other way and here's another koala crossing sign right here One thing too is they have a lot of signage on the roads. You know, you know where you're kind of going by the signs and you know the speed, the speed does vary. Like right now, oh, and they have a drive-through bottle shop. Oh, there's a drive-through bottle shop. Bottle shop's what we call a liquor store, beer store in our end of the world. But I do say they put up a lot of signs along the way. So, you know, telling you what's coming up, where you're going, speed limits, crossings. It's like a whole book on their roads. You can read lots of things. Another thing they have a lot, a lot of here, and we do have these in certain spots of our country and in the United States as well, is you notice this white line on the left here, the shoulder. Well, it just disappeared, but there was another like little ridgy line along it as well. Well, basically, if you get too close to the shoulder, you, when your tires hit that line, there it is there, you see that, the dotted line? You will hear like buzz, 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 which is a warning to you that you are too far over. Which might be good because these roads, it's long distance between places here on this particular road anyways and if you start to nod off to sleep and you start to drift then the idea is this is going to shake you awake and maybe you should pull over and have a little nap. The same here in the center lines. See all those little broken pieces? If Walter was to drive over there and he has, that's how come I know it works that way. Uh, this is no overtaking go, lane. This will go rattle rattle. Yeah that's all but I'm looking at the little things there. And yeah this is an overtaking lane because this is essentially only a two-way highway. So, you know, you get behind a slow-moving vehicle, then you have these periodically. We have them too in Canada, out more in the more country-like settings too. So it's not anything different from our country. And they have rest stops along the way, especially for truckers. There's a sign there, I don't know if you noticed it, that told the uh, how far away it was for a truck to park, I guess, if they want to rest a bit. And there's areas, too, for cars as well. Um, sometimes there's little breakout pieces. They're very short. Um, only in the kangaroo and koala crossing here. Oh, there it is. There's the monkeys. Did you see the monkeys? I know it's a people crossing, but the way they're drawn, they look like monkeys. One big monkey leading another monkey. Okay, so go ahead. Shoot got an imagination but anyways it's saying they have these little bump out areas to the side uh, and they'll tell you like it's from 500 meters and I guess if you're feeling tired or you're having some problems with your car you can pull off onto them now I haven't seen those here on this road but on the motorways they will have them and they usually have a phone right there as well so you know if you need emergency help you can make a call we have something like that in Ontario but they seem to have them more frequently here than we do on our major roadways. I guess they figure we have cell phones, so you know, in outside of a larger city in Canada, you wouldn't have any problem phoning for help with your cell phone. I'm not sure what the cell connection is like right here. I have to look at my bars, but I don't have it in the, in my screen while well, I'm doing this. The SIM card that we have has got one of the best. Uh, Supposedly the best, one of the best in Australia for uh, coverage. So if you're not getting a good coverage here, then you're not going to get it with anybody else either. So. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so that's what it's like to drive on these roads. And the roads that we have been on, this one's a little bouncy, but for the most part, they're very well kept up. to the mountain and in here somewhere there is a national park so we saw some signs for that Friendly, it says. Okay. And round and round we go. This big mountain ahead of us. Yeah, I know. Right up there. This road's very reminiscent of something we were on not so long ago. Maybe that was out in the East Coast. Truck 
century. Okay. There's another hard working guy. I guess we're on a break. I don't know. that were on the side of this working hooked up to ropes and everything hanging out in space doing whatever sort of the high point of the road on the mountain and now we're traveling down on the other side. At least that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. You see all the cars lined up the other way too as well. There's a set of lights that uh, regulate this so we're on the green side obviously right now and these people are all backed up waiting for them to get the green go. another construction stop here. Welcome to Southern Downs. A lot of sunflowers in that sign. I don't know if they have something to do with sunflowers here or what. Maybe. Right now we're just stuck behind everybody else. It looks like they're letting other people go. Probably have a traffic light up here as well that they use for the construction. For the controlling of the traffic through the construction site. So here we sit. traveled over 12,000 kilometers to end up here at the Big Apple. I am just so excited I can hardly wait. And what else is here? Well, there is a coffee shop. We'll see if this was worth the drive. Local wines, I think. Grand Bell. Local wines yeah. here. And then they have some jars of things. Hot sauces, garlic, rosemary. I make it and I just can't hide it. Ooh, ooh, so much. We could spend days just here on itself. <laughs> or in other words, it could feel like days. Oils, pickled things. OK, 
cashew based cheese. Do they have any apple pie? Okay, so we have driven all the way from Brisbane to here for the Big Apple. You saw the Big Apple. It's nothing more than a little cafe store in here. And we've decided we are going to try their apple pie with ice cream. Walter's gone up now to get some cappuccinos as well. So we will see what this is about. I am not anticipating the pie. The crust looks like cardboard. And uh, we have a big apple out in our end of the world and it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. They try to, their apple is always about four times bigger but their apple pies are absolutely disgusting. They have core and pits and everything. Here comes Walter, 26. Yeah. So I'm just telling everybody about the excited big apple out our end of the world and how the apple pie there is like seeds and core and everything and it's disgusting. And so we're gonna see, to be really honest, I have a feeling this isn't going to be all that wonderful either, but we're here, we're having the damn pie. So while we wait for our pie and shiver in anticipation of it, we are having a couple of cappuccinos, large ones. And actually their cappuccino's pretty good. It came though with a crouton. Well, it was the end piece of a piece of biscotti. It was not very big, like about a half an inch piece. And actually it was very tasty. I could have used more of the biscotti, but apparently that's all you can have. And here's what we've been shivering in anticipation for, waiting for. It is our apple pie. Walter got a bigger piece than I did with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Ooh, I'm sure this is, okay, let's see what's Walter's opinion. He's very picky. Well. Crust is a little flowery. Uh-huh. Very tart. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It's a little bland. A little bland? Okay. So, Walter says it's a little it's bland. Better than the one, so far, it's better than the one that... Than the big apple out in our end of the world. Okay. Okay. So, I didn't have the heart to tell the guy when he asked us how we liked the pie, but we didn't. It... Okay, there was absolutely no flavor to it whatsoever. The ice cream was grocery store standard vanilla ice cream. Tiny little scoop of that. Didn't cut their pieces evenly. So Walter got a larger piece than I did. Not that I'm complaining because I've never tasted anything so bland in my life. Abs and the crust was soft. The crust yeah. was soft, but the crust was not a regular pastry pie crust. It was a, like a, what they call a tart. You know, sort of a sort of a very light short bready type of crust and just absolutely no flavor to it. Now, two slices of pie with a teeny scoop of ice cream cost us $21. And then we got two cappuccinos. Now the cappuccinos actually were good. They were fine. But if you're coming to Stanthorpe and you see the big apple, don't waste your time stopping. Um, I don't know. Are Austra is Australia famous for its apples anyways? I've never heard of that. I mean, apples are something in North America that is really, in the colder part of North America, is plentiful. In our area, it is plentiful uh, with apples. All kinds of varieties and things like that. So I don't know. And then Walter also said he saw a video about this place on YouTube at one point in time. And you thought that what it um was a different name i thought it was satin's apples or something and now it's vincenzo's and where did, you said you saw a for sale sign didn't you yeah in the front window oh, there right there it says yeah. contact for sale okay so we have a feeling this place went under new management at some point in time since walter saw that video which he thought was only put up about a couple of years ago and maybe it was better at one time maybe i don't know the pie looked about the same yeah yeah well Real disappointment. I think it might have been Grandma's recipe. Yeah, I think Grandma's dead. <laughs> and if she's not, she should be for making mm. something like that. But anyways, yeah, well, live and learn. You know, it was a break well, from the road. Try. Well, it was worth a try. But like yeah, I'm telling well, I you... I wanted to see whether the, this was any better than the one that the, they have the Big Apple in Ontario. Yeah, well, the, our and Big our Apple... Big Apple Ontario sucks. ...is worse. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> worse. Yeah, A lot worse, actually. Because uh, they, like, have machines that mechanically 
cut up the apples. They may hear her too, but they cut up the apples and they put the core, the seeds, the little, those little Barbie parts that the seeds hit into are all in the pie. It's disgusting. So at least, okay, so in that way, if I measure it against the one that's near our area, this is 300% better, but it's still not saying much. So now we are headed to the town of Stanthorpe. There are lots of wineries in this area and checking into our hotel is not until two anyways and right now it's not quite noon. So we will have to kill some time, maybe go to a winery. There's a big park downtown too. Oh, there's a big park. That's where the big thermometer is. Oh, the big thermometer? Two big things in one day, hope is still my heart. I can't stand the excitement. <sighs> Am I sounding facetious? Yeah, well I mean to. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, this is this is probably the real Australia, okay? Which doesn't mean I don't like it any less. There you go, it's, there's the city or the town sign and everything. Um, but anyways, I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting a whole heck of a lot. We're roughing it right now. Someone will say, well, that's because you're just city boys and you don't have any appreciation for nature. Anyway, yeah, I have a lot of appreciation for nature, but yeah, I am a city boy. Okay, I enjoy the jungle, concrete oh, jungle. Oh, they have a McDonald's. Oh, they're civilized. There's McDonald's. There you go. Now let's compare a McDonald's apple pie with what we just had. Hmm, not sure who'd win on that one. Um, oh, they have a McCrispy. Okay, but anyways, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry to any of the natives here in Australia if you think I'm being rude and, and uh, you know towards. Things. I am really not intending to. It's kind of tongue, done with tongue in cheek. I mean, any small town like this that has, you know, their claim to fame is a big apple and a big thermometer, well, you can find that in where we live too. It's the same kind of thing. Do anything to pull in the tours, you know. That's how it works. And I get it. That's okay. Um, but anyways, we'll see what this little town's like. Somebody uh, wrote a message on our last video stating that uh, it's a pretty little town. So, okay, so yeah, we'll see a pretty little town. And we're staying there too, so yeah, yeah well, what more can I say? I, I don't know. So, this is Stanthorpe, and uh, it does have a busy little downtown seems to go on for quite a ways, a little bit more than I expected. Let me see if I can get up here without falling down. There's that way, and there's that way. So, we're just gonna wander around, see what there's to see, maybe find some place, have lunch or whatever, and uh, yeah. More shots of Stanford. Quaint little town. And when I say quaint, I mean well, I don't know. <laughs> it's usually a term I use for, wow, well, ain't that nice. <laughs> and this is a little park here with a river running through it. And rumor has it, it's the home of the big thermometer. Be still my heart. There in the distance is the big thermometer. But there's a pathway across this water right here. And I don't want to fall off it. But we're going to the big thermometer. This Ooh, is very picturesque. Yes. It's very picturesque. Nice little park. Yeah. Okay, just had a lovely chat with the lady in the uh, information center. And uh, like I said, Australians are all very friendly. And here we are, we are at the big thermometer. And at the very top of the big thermometer, you can see what the temperature is. And it's 22.8 degrees C. But you'll notice there's nothing in this. This is just a hole. <laughs> I mean, I was expecting a thermometer, and it's more or less it a, is a thermometer. Well, it's not really. It's a. It's a hole. It's a hole. It's sculpted. It's a giant penis. Yeah. <laughs>
Oops. Oops. No, it isn't a penis. Walter says it's a penis. Yeah. Okay. 14 year old boy just came out. Yeah, Walter, that is. But as I said before, it is a pretty little park and it seems to run down quite a ways over there. Walter's fat head is in my way. Okay, there we go. All the way down. Oh, yeah, well, you're fat head, yeah, really, huh? -huh. That's kind of a nice little home right there. The veranda around it and everything. It looks kind of nice and looks out over top of across the little river and whatnot. Quite a mixture of architecture, it seems here. I'm sure if we were to walk around in the residential area, we'd see a lot more different styles. I don't know what kind of bird or duck this might be. Oh, they squeal. They scream. They scream. Okay, you Aussies. Tell me, what is this? What's this thing called? I don't know if it's going to scream again or not. It doesn't go quack quack. It goes scream. <laughs> you heard of screaming goats? These are screaming ducks or birds or something. Hello duck or bird, whatever you are. It's not going to scream again, darn. Walter's chasing ducks. Oh yeah, that sounded like it. for horses, not for birdies. Please, this is a chill. I have oh, this, is a, video. this is a family show. It's gonna be bad language here. Stop, stop using foul language. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It squeaked. Squeak again. Come on, squeak. Yeah, I turn my back on it, it squeaks. Okay, enough bird pickers. We are going to the reject shop. Reject shop, reject shop. Wow, let's see what kind of rejects they have. So I don't know why they call it the reject shop, unless this... Ooh, here's Walter's favorite. But I don't know how much they are. They're free. So, kind of like a dollar store, but not a dollar store. Just, I have a feeling a lot of these things are liquidation things or whatever. Was that Walter I heard? It's not like a dollar general. Yeah, I know. Well, they've got your favorite chocolate in the box. Mm. Cadbury favorites, but I can't find a price on them. Mm. Yeah, I have a feeling. Yeah. Well, they're there. Great supplies. Walter says it's like a Dollar General, which I suppose it is. Lots of things. I love these kind of stores. I love just looking at things that are like junk. Speaking of junk, there's Walter down the little far end. Let's see if we can catch up to him. He's busy looking for a bargain, no doubt. I lost them. See, they're over here. But there's there isn't a price on them. Mm. 
They've got the crunch. Mm. That's a chocolate. Who knows? Yeah, well. So this is our motel room. Quaint little thing. Small, very clean, very semi-modern. Huge TV, as you can see. Not, but it doesn't matter. It's fine for this room. It's got a nice bathroom. Walter's standing in it right now. It's got a little sort of a kitcheny area, a little fridge down below, desk. And in these cupboards, they have, you know, plates and everything and flatware and glasses. And Walter's trying to figure out the air conditioning. It's going now. Okay, it's going now. And this is the bathroom. Tiny, but very modern. Nice shower stall as well. So, yeah, it'll do for one night. It's okay. Okay, this is the motel we're staying at, the Granite Belt Motel. It's a little bit, about a kilometer from the right downtown, but you know, it's only a thousand meters, so not bad. Nice little grounds, very neat, very tidy. And I already showed you the room and it looks, you know, it's, it suffices for one night. It will do. And tonight we can drink our wine sitting out on the little, you can see the little tables and chairs at each part. And right now there's only our car and another car in here. Don't know if this place filled up tonight or what. It is a Monday, but hard to say. But anyways, it will do.